Welcome to an all new Downright Sports. I am your host, Brent Reed, the notorious sports critic. And if you have never, ever, 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 oh, dang, got it. <laughs> Basically, dang, got it. Heard this show before. Let me tell you about it. Downray Sports is a sports show for sports fans, spoken to all of you. By a sports fan. Welcome to season four of Downright Sports, episode one. After the reboot, uh, Downright Sports had like a crazy reboot, like a hundred years ago. Show's been on forever, but we I revamped it. But whatever. This is Downright Sports, and this is all new episode. For those of you here in the show for the very first time, well, buckle up because it's going to get weird. You can always listen to the show on DJ Chase Radio, DJ Chase Radio app, or anywhere major podcasters are downloaded. Apple, Spotify, just to name a few. The show is also on Dynasty Radio, Trap Radar Radio, and She Real Radio. Well, more to the come to that. More to the come to that. <laughs> you can also subscribe to Downray Sports at YouTube. Subscribe and like. The show is also sponsored by W, your energy drink that's clean and gives you no kind of crash. That's a good, clean energy, kids. So the show is back from a summer hiatus. There was some, I got to take this off because it's hot in here. I don't want to ruin this hat. This gray's gear is fresh, though, for those of you listening I got Gray's gear on. How about that? Uh, the Homestead Graves, home of the famous Negro League team, which was like the Yankees of the Negro Leagues. Go figure. Anyway, back from a summer break. Um, so much to catch up on, but we have an entire month to dive into that. Today's show, we're going to touch on uh, Deion Sanders and what he's doing with Colorado. We're going to play catch and catch up with baseball. We're going to do some news, but we're going right now to start. The show here and talk about football because football is back officially, officially this Thursday, boys and girls. That's why we're doing the show a little earlier so we can, you know, you guys can, all four of you can listen and enjoy what's come ahead and, you know, have some fun and tell a friend, and tell a friend, and tell a friend. You feel me? Anyway, so the football season is coming back and let's recap the 2022 season. Uh, last year, the 2022 season ended with the man, the guy, the, the as they say, him, Patrick Mahomes, winning another Super Bowl, his second in his very short career. They beat the Philadelphia Eagles, a team of so much promise and a lot of praise, and they took care of business and got the job done. Um, Tom Brady called it quits. He finally stepped away and retired. He will no longer um, torment all of you Tom Brady haters out there. He is now retired. The, the Brady era is over, but there's still one guy lurking out there from that old days of quarterbacks like Brady, Manning, um, Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers, Eli. There's still one out there, and it's Aaron Rodgers, which we're going to dive into and discuss. So, what changes have happened in 2023? Well, Aaron Rodgers is heading to is in New York. He's with the Jets, and they're going to kick off the season uh, Monday Night Football versus the Chargers. And it's exciting if you're a Jets fan. It's terrifying if you're a Packers fan. And if you are rooting for a train wreck, or you're rooting uh, rooting for a uh, storybook uh, storyline, this is the the team you need to watch. The Jets has always been like, the Jets and the Mets have so much in common. I think I've made this analogy once before, but they, unless you're a Patriots fan or a Dolphins fan or a Bills fan, you are just sympathetic for the Jets. The Jets go out their way to try to win. They go for the flashy coaches. They go for the flashy players. And they kind of always flirt. And they kind of always get a little close, like they'll get to AFC championships, but they just can't get back. 
Let me be clear how, if you're a Jets fan, how much the pain Jets fan, how much pain Jets fans feel. Jets have not been to the Super Bowl since winning it in 69. Have not been back. They've been close to AFC Championship games, but you got to think to yourself, this is a team that spends money. They play in New York City, and it's unheard of a team that plays in a major market just to never go or always fall short. Or when they put together rosters, it just dissolves. And like the Mets, who have been to the World Series, which is the equivalent of the Super Bowl, more recently than the Jets have, as recent as 2015, the same thing. They make the flashy moves and it falls apart. Just like the Mets, the Jets are banking their future on a quarterback that is north uh, is 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 40. If not, he will be. Just like the Mets, the Mets bank their championship in their future on two pitchers who had the average eight of 80 plus. So the Jets uniquely last year had a very fantastic, uh, very good uh, defense. If their running back didn't get hurt last year, they might have made a little more noise than what they did. But now for this head coach in his second full season or third full season, and for Aaron Rodgers and his offensive coordinator that got drummed, not 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 asked to leave, was drummed out of Denver to the point where the new head coach, which is a good segue, Sean Payton, who is taking over the Denver Broncos, called this man out and basically said he's incompetent and is a dumb, dumb head and can't coach. Like, wow. Wow. Shots fired. So you got a situation where Denver, like the Jets, are putting all their eggs in a once champion. Uh, Sean Payton won a championship in 2009, 2010, something like that. Uh, I want to say 2000, is it either 2009 or 2010? Sean Payton won his Super Bowl. Hasn't been back since. The Broncos have been back more recently, but now they're hoping that Payton and Wilson can make magic happen. Because last year, Wilson in his first year with Denver looked trash, straight up. Could it look like he forgot how to play? That was not a guy who led Seattle to two Super Bowl uh, appearances with a win in one of them. That was not a guy that had that team in the playoffs. Like, he got, like, hopefully he didn't get exposed. I said, like, like six times in that one brief statement. But if you're the Jets, if you're Denver, you're really hoping and praying to God that all the chips fall together this year, that it all happens. In fact, we... If the perfect scenario would be Denver versus the Jets in the AFC Championship game. That would be perfect. Now, for my Uncle Timmy, who's a Denver hater because he's a Raiders fan, his perfect scenario would be the Raiders in and whoever, and then the Raiders to the Super Bowl, then the Raiders will win the Super Bowl, and then he would have seen the Raiders win the Super Bowl more recently than uh, the end of Disco. So, where's my script? Let's stay on task. So... Who has the most pressure this season at anyone? Is it Aaron Rodgers and the Jets? Is it Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Orioles? Or is it Cleveland and Deshaun Watson? Hmm. Hmm. Let's start back with, shall we? Last year, the Cleveland Browns decided they were going to get Deshaun Watson. He was going to be their future. He was going to be their franchise. He was going to be the guy they put all the chips on. They traded the farm for him and then paid him. Paid him. Let me say that again. Paid him a nice, hefty, hefty bag for him to do something. He didn't even play until week 11. The guy had scrutiny. He had allegations. He was looking at possible jail time. And they said, give him the money. Get all to him. Give the money to a guy who was allegedly doing inappropriate sexual actions to masseuses he was hiring off Craigslist or some weird thing like that. But now Cleveland has to, something has to happen. Cleveland also, like the Jets, makes a lot of splashy moves. Not in the coaching world. They keep hiring kind of like guys you never heard of before. But they try to get players who names make the back page. If anything, Cleveland and the Jets, what they have in common is they look to win the back page. The back page, for those of you that are a certain age, is the newspaper. Because back in the day, whoever was on the newspaper on the back page was the top story. If you were a sports fan, if you were on the front page, you were the story. Uh, the equivalent to that would be clickbait. Everybody's trying to get clickbait. Does that help? Does that help? Cool. Last season, if we go back to last season on my computer, 
The Cleveland Browns finished dead last in the division. They did win seven games. They went seven and ten. Good for them. This year, they're in a division. Like, Deshaun is in a division with Joe Burrow, Deshaun Jackson. Not Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Who the heck is Deshaun? Lamar Jackson and the Steelers, who always are competitive. Unless Cleveland has, is just going to look, because they've been quiet this offseason. Maybe they finally are building through the draft, but this is the year. But in that division, Lamar has the same pressure. So does Baltimore. Lamar sat out, didn't do any organized practices, basically wanted to be traded until they gave him the bag. And on top of that, gave him um, Odell Beckham Jr., giving him a target, something he asked for. Now you kind of got everything you asked for. Now you got to produce. Uh, Baltimore historically has always been a defensive team. Jackson has been explosive, exciting. He's a wower. He is clickbait material. The guy is a TikTok highlight. That's all fine and dandy, but can you win? Because the other guy that plays in the AFC is the man who's got now two championships, three MVP, two or three. He's either got two or three MVPs, and that's Patrick Mahomes. And no matter what, all you guys do, you got to go through him unless he just injury after injury after injury. This football season, unlike any other, in my opinion, has the most question marks out of all of them. Why do you ask? I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked me why did I say that. Break it down like this. If it goes as scripted, in the AFC East, you have the Bills, who have been the top team in that division, hands down, but they cannot find a way to just get over the hump. But they're still a stout, good team. Miami has gotten better, and if their quarterback stays upright, that is an explosive college-style offense if I've ever seen one. You've got New England, still coached by Belichick, a team that still was competitive, was in the playoff race up until the last moment, and finally has decided, look, Matt Jones is my quarterback. They added Zeke Elliott. If they could get any production out of him, that team defensively is always going to be good. Offensively is where basically Bill Belichick now with the offensive coordinator and not a Phil and Frank. They're going to hope that all Matt Jones has to do is not turn the ball over. And then the Jets, whose defense was good enough last year, added, if he's still good, the man who is would some would say is the best offensive quarterback they've ever seen. I beg to differ. I think it's Patrick Mahomes. But still, now that division is jam-packed. AFC North, I just explained, you got the Bengals, was just in the Super Bowl two years ago. The Ravens, Jackson, those guys, they still won 10 games and he barely played. Pittsburgh is always ready to punch you in the mouth, and Cleveland's supposed to be better. The AFC South, well, that's always a dumpster fire, and it's always going to be fun to watch. Jacksonville, Tennessee, the Colts, well, that, that, that won't matter. Let's get back to a real division like the AFC West, where KC, the Chargers, and let's see if now... The Raiders in Denver are going to be better. The Raiders got Jimmy Garoppolo. Denver's got a new head coach. Let's see, because you're now talking one, two, three, four. Out of four divisions, three of them are going to be tough as heck. Those three divisions are pretty much going to be the SEC of professional sports, realistically. And you still got to say to yourself, if, if everybody beats themselves up in those divisions... If Jacksonville stays healthy or Tennessee maybe stays healthy, could you see Tennessee or Jacksonville sneaking past everybody and finding themselves in a AFC championship or, dare I say, a Super Bowl? Hmm, think about that. If you want to also go to some things that, you know, because I've seen very AFC heavy, I'll throw some NFC out there. In the AFC East, is going to be competitive. It may be. I think, the AF, I think the NFC East is going to go one or two ways. I think this is the final year you see the Dak Prescott era. Dallas, like the Yankees, have done jack squat to make their team better. And if anything, all they did was continue to have clickbait material, put themselves on the back pages because they traded for Lance, uh, what's his name, Trevor Lawrence, or Trevor Lance, something like that, the quarterback that was drafted by the 49ers. He sucks. And if the Cowboys think that's their answer, <laughs> Jerry Jones is huffing glue up in that stadium. I'm here to tell you right now, the Eagles run this division, but the Giants will be back and will be equally as competitive. I think the Washington Commanders, who have new ownership, a new vision, 
a new team, a new culture, rejuve fans. That stadium is going to be packed to the gills. You will see a better Washington Commanders team. Couldn't tell you who the damn quarterback's going to be, but you will see a better team. In my opinion, this year, the Cowboys finished in last and missed the playoffs because they didn't change a head coach who is trash. They didn't change their quarterback. They didn't upgrade anything catastrophic. And if you're like, well, who they added him? So what? I don't think the Cowboys are overrated, and it's a wrap. If you look at the a NFC North, it's Minnesota's. Not really. Chicago may be competitive, but I don't have much faith in Josh Fields. I think this year, actually, you will see the Detroit Lions be competitive. And I picked on a very, 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 very alternate reality. What is the chance you may get to see Detroit in the Super Bowl? I think Detroit's going to be better than what people think. For those of you that don't follow close, Detroit finished 9-8 and eight last year. That's one of those teams where this year you need to pay attention and watch. Because they do have a quarterback that played in a Super Bowl not that long ago. And um, uh, Jared Goff, who is a pro quarterback, can throw the ball. And that team is going to be ready to play. And this Thursday, when they play KC, just like Colorado, they're going to want to make a statement. If you look at the NFC North, I mean, NFC South, that one is up for grabs. Carolina's got a new young quarterback. Uh, the Saints uh, have a new older quarterback in uh, David Carr. The Falcons is still trying to get themselves together. And Tampa Bay is in the post-Tom Brady era. In all honesty, this is going to be the most exciting division to watch for all sort of reasons because any given week, any of those teams, they may flip-flop back and forth who's first, second, third, and fourth every week. That division, now, none of them are going to the Super Bowl, but it's going to be fun to watch if this young man for Carolina can make some noise. And then in the AFC Northwest, same thing. Are the Rams going to bounce back? Is Seattle going to show that last year wasn't a fluke? Is Geno the guy still? Him? Or San Francisco with their 17 different quarterbacks in their rotation, can they make some noise? Because if Sam Donald's your answer, whew, well, yeah. There are only a few or a handful of good divisions. And in the NFC, if you're the Eagles, the Giants, Minnesota, and you don't take advantage of some of these weak teams this year, either the Chiefs, Baltimore, the championship's going back to the AFC. I'm just calling it out. Count it like it is, kids. Count it like it is. I'm kind of really like it is. Hey, this is Downray Sports. It's been a lot. It's, I'm happy to be back. Um, show's a little chaotic because I'm doing it on a Monday. I'm also doing it at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't done a show this early in a very, very long time. Uh, download uh, the DJ Chase radio app to listen to all, all things in music, pop culture, and this show especially. New episodes of Downray Sports always download and are available Wednesdays, but this week they will be available a little earlier, but starting next week, going back to the usual. Uh, you can follow Downray Sports on all social media platforms. Come in, we're going to come, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back, and what we're going to discuss is Coach Deion Sanders and his impact to college football. Hey.